Hello and welcome. I'm Carol Ingram and I'm part of the Selkie Design Team. Today I'm going to bring you some really cool projects that you can do with your grandchildren and they are in our Selkie Secrets to Successful Quilting book. It's a crayon project that I did with my granddaughter and she and I had such wonderful fun coloring together and I'm going to show you today how we've colored and used crayons and sandpaper to make some really cute things. Uh, everybody wants something special at the, at the holiday seasons and today we're going to make a t-shirt for you and your grandchild to wear at the, holiday, at the Easter holiday. And we're going to do that using uh, crayons and sandpaper. First of all, I want to show you that we have several different kinds of crayons. There's the fabric crayons, which come from different uh, companies. We also have regular the Crayola crayons, and the Crayola crayons come in the small package, and they come in the big large jumbo crayons. Any one of these will work. And how many of us have uh, washed crayons in our children's clothing and dried it in the dryer, and we had stain all over the garment? Well, the stain is, be is from the dye that's in the crayon, and it's just the wax that holds it together. So what we're going to do is control that stain where we want it to be, iron away the wax, and leave the stain in our design. I want you to know also that the um, fabric crayons work really well on a polyester type uh, combination co poly cotton as well as the regular crayons work on poly cotton. They cling very, very well to the polyester, so the, uh, if you can get polyester in your garment, that would be great. But I have done it on cotton, and it seems to never want to wash away. So today I've chosen to use a really heavy grade uh, sandpaper. Now this is a sandpaper that I purchased at just the local hardware store. And uh, it comes in different grades, as you know. It comes in a fine grade, it comes in a medium grid, and then it comes in the very coarse grid. I have a sample here that shows you this is the finer grid and this is the, corner, the coarser grid. And what happens is when you draw on the uh, sandpaper, the crayon sticks to the grid and then you get an impression of where you put the crayon on the grid. It's just a vehicle that holds the crayon and the wax for you to transfer it to. So if you want a finer grain or a coarser grain, that would be your choice. So today I've chosen the coarse grade. And what I've done is I've taken my t-shirt, and this t-shirt I think uh, is a poly cotton. And on the inside, I've taken and stabilized. How many of you have tried to grow on something and it curls up like so? And when it curls up, it makes little wrinkles in your design. So what I've tried to do is stabilize that design, and I've put a paper stabilizer on the inside. That paper stabilizer is totally stable. And Totally Stable comes in rolls, it comes in packages, and it comes by the yard on the bolt. What I like about this, uh, this stabilizer is you can put two or three layers and get a heavier uh, stabilization just by adding another layer. It has a slick side, if you can see that, and it has a soft side. And what we like to refer to it is a slick side sticks. So you always put the slick side down, and that's the, the sticky side that irons to the fabric. It comes in beautiful clamshell uh, uh, packaging. The packaging is well labeled. It has directions on the inside. And when you store it, it keeps it nice and clean. And the directions and what you the type of stabilizer is always visible on the front. So this is a wonderful way to purchase your stabilizers, totally stable. Uh, we also have another stabilizer that's called Sticky. And Sticky is the paper stabilizer that has a release sheet. And that release sheet, you pull it off and there's sticky residue on that, which acts the same way as a totally stable, but you don't have to iron it. You can just press it on. I have a sample here to show you that this is sticky, this is totally stable. What I've done is I've shown you that you can both equally allows the fabric to be very stable so that you don't have any curling when you try to color. This is, works really well with your children because your children uh, at the younger age have difficulty uh, 
controlling the fabric and holding their hands trying to spread it like so and coloring. So this is a wonderful tool to uh, use when you're doing whole cloth quilts or t-shirt garments or something like that with your children. So what we've done here is I put two layers of, of totally stable. I've ironed one layer on and then iron the second layer on to make it nice and thick. And as you can see through here that this is the area I'm going to be in. So I'm going to put this uh, design across the front of the shirt. You can see that I've chosen this area right here where it's going to be the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go in here and grow some grass. Like so. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to choose my uh, sandpaper. And I've already cut out Easter eggs out of the sandpaper. At this point, I'd like to tell you that you really need an old pair of scissors because the sandpaper is really going to take the edge off of your scissors. So this is not a time that you want to use your, your dressmaking scissors or your good uh, scissors. You need to put those in the drawer and bring out your old scissors. So uh, at that point, then I'm going to use my crayons. And today, I'm going to use a mixture of both crayons. I'm going to use um, both the fabric crayons as well as the regular Crayola brand. And as you can see, I'm just coloring. This is where you're going to color with your child. I've covered my surface, my working surface, with a um, heat resistant uh, protection so that you won't get any stain on your, your workings, on your ironing surfaces. If you're going to work at the ironing board, you certainly don't want to have this uh, come back with stains on your. And I have to say, if you do get it on your ironing board and you try to iron a white blouse, it will transfer onto your white blouse. So you need to cover your working surface. You can also cover it with old muslin, which would help. So you're going to have your children and you color your crayons or color with your crayons and color your eggs like so. And you're going to push really hard because you want this wax and crayon to get down into the tooth of the uh, sandpaper because that sandpaper now has held that color in that spot. And then we're going to arrange our Easter eggs like so like so and like so, like they're hiding in the grass from the children. And now I'm going to lay the muslin over my Easter eggs and iron so that I can get rid of the wax. So you're going to have your iron set at the hottest that you can uh, go, hottest you can set it, and you're going to just press and lift. Press and hold it and lift. Press and lift. One of the things you do not want to do is you do not scoot your iron because it might scoot the wax across your design. So you're just going to heat it, press and lift, heat it, press and lift. And you can count to 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, you know, for 10 seconds or so. So that you get every bit of that wax that's caught into the teeth of the um, sandpaper to melt away. So then now you can see that the sandpaper ha uh, shows on the back side that it's been melted away. So there you have your egg and there you have another egg and there you have another egg and another egg. While that is still warm you can take your crayon and you can draw around like so and further enhance like this. to get the form of the egg. Now, I've just colored a portion of my sandpaper egg. You could color the entire egg if you want to, whatever your children want to do. And then there again, I'm going to lay my muslin back down because I want to remelt the, the wax that I